Hi everyone, I'm back with another makeup video and I wouldn't really call this video a tutorial because I didn't really know what I was doing and I was kind of just winging it um, but I think everyone can treat this video as sort of a guide, a process video if you will. It took me a very long time. This was one of the most time intensive looks I've done in a while, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. I recreated a look by Makeup by Fee on Instagram. She called it this circus look. I think it looks like a Venetian mask, it, at least that's what it reminded me of, um, but I think it turned out well. <laughs> and here I added a little red light to make it more dramatic for Halloween. Um, but hopefully you can find this entertaining or helpful. And enjoy! So, like I mentioned before, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was kind of just winging it. I had a reference picture, obviously, but I wasn't really sure where I wanted to start. But I always start with my base, obviously. So I drew an outline of where I wanted the mask portion to go. And then I started filling it in with white face paint and also white concealer because it just blends a little bit easier for me on my skin because I have some dry patches. So it was a mixture of white paint and white concealer. And I keep filling that in until it gets to an opacity that I'm happy with. The cream products that I were using were kind of transparent once I was blending them out. So I did a lot of layering to get the opacity to where I wanted it. Next, I took a white eyeshadow and was putting that on top of the parts of my face that get really oily. I am a very oily person and next I start going in with the gold on my neck area and this is on going around the edges of my face my neck everywhere I'm using the Veron uh, gold metallic gold powder that I mix with a mixing liquid and I put that everywhere I really like the Veron mixing uh, powders. They last so long and a little goes a long way so it, you really get a lot for your money and they're not an expensive brand and they're cruelty free so I, I really like that brand. And I use it a, a lot of their face paints uh, for my Halloween looks. Next I'm starting on the outside edges and working in Again, I wasn't really sure where to start with this look because there are a lot of intricate details, but I figured just working from the outside in was the simplest thing to do. And I'm only working on one side of my face first, and then I'm just going to do the other side of my face afterwards once I figured this part out. So I'm starting with a teal, like a dark teal eyeshadow. This is the ColourPop eyeshadow. And I'm taking it on a fluffy brush and I'm just forming this sort of contour shadow effect um, on the mask part. And I'm blending this out as best I can. It was kind of tripping over the white face paint that I used. I think I should have set the face paint a bit more because my skin gets so incredibly oily. Uh, so if you also have incredibly oily skin, definitely set the face paint more than what I did. But in the end, I think it turned out okay. I just, I, I was working in, in bits at a time and just patting the color in and then blending out and patting it in and blending out. And so I'm working on the outer edges and trying to form that cheek contour. I wanted to go in with the cheek line 
as a guide for myself so I knew how far down the shadow on the cheek needed to go and I took some more of the white face paint to cover up the parts where I, I took the shadow too far down. So again, after I put that black line down as a guide for myself, I started packing in the teal color more. Next, I'm going to start laying down the color that is above the eyebrow. I'm starting with the yellow. I'm going to work lighter to darker colors. So I'm starting with the yellow and blending that out and building the half circle rounded shape above the eyebrow. Next, I'm going in with a red shade, and again, I'm building it up into this half circle shape and just using the fluffy brush to blend it into the yellow shadow that I put down beforehand. Once I have the start of the shadow down, I want to start building a guide for where the black is going to go and the shape that the eyes are going to take. Now, this is just a guide. I go in later and fill it in more, but I wanted the general shape of how the eye makeup is going to look, so I knew where to put the color. So once I put that shape, that black line down with the eyeliner, I go in with a black eyeshadow and I start packing that in. And then I go in with a separate small blending brush to blend it out. But as you can see, I'm kind of jumping all over the place. I wanted to get my lines down first. So I went in with a red liner to get that, that squiggly line detail set first because I didn't want to put the shadow like too far one way or the other and I needed the lines set and down first so I knew where to place the shadow around it. So I'm going back to the black eyeshadow now and this is where I'm packing the color in and I'm going to be blending it out into the red and yellow shades that I had put down before. It kind of reminded me of a sunset almost uh, from the reference photo. So I wanted the, the blending the gradient to be as smooth as possible, but it is over my eyebrow, so it's a little hard. And here, again, I needed the guides down, the, the lines down to guide me, so I put the start of a blue shape down so I knew on the outer corner how far I needed to bring the black and where I could blend it. So a lot of these things, I, I start the lines just so I know where to go and then I finalize them later on. And like I said before, I want the gradient to be as smooth as possible with these eyeshadows so I'm just packing the color on in little bits and blending it out and packing the color on and blending it out and trying to create a smooth transition. Now this is where I go back in with a water activated black liner and I'm going back and cleaning up the black guide lines that I had set down. So this is the outer wing. I'm going in and filling that in more and creating the more defined shape that I want for this look. Here I'm going back over the guidelines I had done around my eyebrow area and those details. I want them to be more black and more defined than the guide that I had done previously, obviously. So that's why I'm going back in with the water activated black liner. And I'm cleaning it up, making it more defined, and creating the shape I truly want. I wanted to move on to the nose contour next, but uh, the reference photo had this yellow shadow kind of used as a blush. So I put that down first, put that all over my nose and parts of the cheek area, because then I'm going to go in with the same teal shadow that I used for the contour around the edge of my face. And I'm going to use that to contour my nose area. And this is very, very exaggerated, but I'm also 
just in general really bad at contouring my nose. I don't really know how to contour properly. I kind of just do whatever I feel like doing, but this obviously I'm looking at the reference photo and I'm seeing where the shadow needs to be placed. And it is very exaggerated obviously because this is a Halloween look, so it's going to be exaggerated. But I do that on both sides and I blend out the edges as best as I can. So now I am going to start doing the more detailed line work, which was very intimidating for me. And I was kind of hesitant to start this, which is why I kept it towards the end bit. Um, but as you can see, I keep looking over to the side because that's where my re reference photo is. And I just keep looking back at that as I'm drawing the line on my face. And I want to start off very lightly pressured lines. That, that's how I can describe it. I did light pressure as I'm drawing these lines. And I'm also, again, using the same black water activated liner because I find that when you're using water activated liner it's easier to clean up messes if it's water activated because you can either take the face paint you were using before and easily clean it up or take water to wipe off mistakes. So here I'm just going slowly creating the shape I want little by little and filling in the bits I need to and trying to clean up edges to make them crisp and seamless because this is a very exaggerated line but it, it should look clean. I wanted the line to look clean. Now I'm going back to the outside of my face and I'm taking the black liner and lining the edge of the mask area. For me this is kind of hard to do because I wear contacts and I find it hard to look out at the peripheral of my vision. So when I have to turn my head to extreme sides, it's really hard to paint the side of my face. Um, but yeah, I do that. I'm just lying on the outside and I definitely mess this up. So I take the gold paint later and clean up the edges. So it's a more crisp black line. Now I'm starting to do the blue detailed squiggly line that's on the inside and this one <laughs> I was going really slow this one made me nervous to do I don't really know why um, but similar to the black squiggly line I'm just taking my time I'm going little by little building up where necessary and starting thin with light pressure so that I don't try not to make a mistake so I do that and again, I'm following the shape on the reference photo. I keep putting my mirror really close to my face so it's kind of hard to see, but I was getting really close in there because this is such a detailed look. So the, the mirror sometimes covers up what I'm doing. Sorry about that. Now I'm moving on to the lid space. So I'm taking a gold paint. This is different than what I used on my neck and the outside parts of my face. I don't know why I decided to switch, but <laughs> this is a gold face paint from Krylon. Um, and I'm putting this all over my lid, but I'm also using this as a means to clean up the black edges more around the eyeliner shape that I created for the eye. So this is just another step to try and make the edges of all the lines that I've drawn really crisp and clean. And then I start bringing the gold down into this swoop line shape that goes over the blue and black lines that I had drawn previously. And I start filling this in with the gold, but then I later decide that the gold wasn't popping enough for me. So I took a brighter yellow color, and this is the yellow matte fluid eye paint from About Face Beauty. And I layer that on top because I wanted it to pop more. So I kind of blend that in. And you can see here, which I didn't film it, but you can see here that the yellow appears now and I kind of blend that up into 
the gold that's on my eyelid and off camera I had done the other side of my face and again for some reason my camera cut off but I had done the red dots above the eyebrows and now I'm filling in uh, the red dots around the nose area kind of like freckles but far more exaggerated than normal freckles and now I'm putting on the lipstick I wanted a kind of bright ready orange color and it doesn't need to be neat because we're gonna go in with a fluffy brush and blend it out and smudge it and make it an exaggerated mouth shape and here I'm, I took a lipstick that could blend. I didn't want to use anything matte because I wanted to be able to smudge it out. And now I'm taking the same black water activated liner and I'm going around the edges to make it look more drawn on and exaggerated, kind of like clown makeup normally is. And I'm taking a bit of the white face paint I'm putting it on the cupid's bow area as a highlight and then i'm going in with a dark maroon burgundy color lipstick and blending that out right on the edges to just give the uh, lip paint a bit more dimension and some shadow on the outside corners now i'm going in with some glitter for my eyelids and this brush that I started with ended up being too large and I couldn't really get into the little crevices that I wanted to. So I switched to my makeup spatula and I'm just layering this on all over my lid and kind of blending it a little bit down into the brighter yellow portion. I also took the same glitter and put some in the middle parts of my mouth to add some pop. Now I'm going in with the fake lashes. I suck at putting on fake lashes. I've been doing this for over a year now and I still suck at putting on fake lashes and I will probably never get better. But I'm using really dramatic lashes. I don't have a lot of dramatic lashes, so these are one of the more dramatic lashes for me. And I'm also putting lashes on my lower lids too, because again, it's a Halloween look. I want it to be dramatic and weird. <laughs> so we're gonna put lashes everywhere. Here I took red water activated face paint on a toothbrush and flung it at my neck to create an added spooky effect. And that is the finished look. This is everything done after four hours. <laughs> and now we're going to get into the post editing. Um, and I figured it would be interesting to show you guys how I typically edit my makeup photos. I don't really do much, I think, but I always think it's good to point out that, you know, my, my photos are clearly edited and that's why I post videos along with my photo so everyone can see that it's edited. So I take all my photos into Lightroom to start and I go through the photos I took. I see which poses, which facial expressions I like and I pick which ones that I'm going to edit. Most times I edit two to three photos at most. I don't really like editing a ton of photos, but I always start by cropping it. And more recently I've been partial to portrait mode. I just think it looks nicer and you can kind of get closer up. And I always adjust the vibrance and saturation to really make the colors pop. And especially with this kind of look, you want the colors to be really bright and then next I take the softened skin tool and I do one sweep through of the soften using the softened skin tool over my skin just to smooth out the texture. And with this look specifically, I want to deepen the blacks and the shadows because I want it to look exaggerated 
and with my oily skin and with my subpar lighting setup there's always a bit of like a sheen and kind of a flash not not really a flashback but the the blacks kind of get washed out sometimes um so depending on the look i will increase the black and make it like deeper and darker where it's needed and now I'm going in and editing my eyes so I need to wear contacts to see so I can't wear the fun Halloween contacts that a lot of other people wear but I wanted my eyes to be white like in the reference photo so I'm just editing them here because it's easier for me than trying to get prescription contacts that are colored. <laughs> Now I'm finishing up these details and I always try to zoom in and out to, you know, see the big picture and see everything all together. And here I'm just messing with the red tone a little bit just to see if I wanted to increase the red, but I ended up not doing that. But once I'm in a good place with it, I bring the photo into Photoshop and this is where I get more granular with the details that I'm editing. I use the clone stamp tool, which is my best friend, honestly. And I'm going around really close up, fixing up the details, fixing up the lines, making sure they're cleaner and crisper and the blacks are more black and basically just overall tidying it up, making it look exactly how I want it to look because obviously when I'm painting it on my face, it isn't gonna be perfect. And so this is just my chance to really make the whole vision come to life how I want it to. And this is another reason why I like posting videos of my looks as well so that people, people can see the differences between you know the edited and the non-edited even though I don't particularly think these are huge differences I think this is just little things that make the look more complete And also, because my skin is so oily and a lot of these intense looks take hours and hours, <laughs> my face paint will sometimes start to smudge. Um, so using the clean stamp tool here also just helps me clean up the areas that start to smudge. And here I'm cleaning up the line work. Again, the shape around my eyebrow wasn't quite what I wanted. My hooded eyes are such a pain sometimes. So I just went in and I was cleaning up the lines, cleaning up the dots, just making it look how I wanted to and you know how it looked in my head. <laughs> I, I zoom in and out a lot. You gotta see things close up but also see it from a distance make sure everything looks good as a whole and here I do this because my eyelashes were kind of falling off and so I didn't want that large gap between <laughs> where my eyelashes were and where my eye actually was so here I just took some black and was filling it in a bit and then I adjust the opacity so it's not such a stark harsh black and that is it and then I save and export so i hope you enjoyed that video i hope it was entertaining maybe it helped some people hopefully it was just a fun watch because i don't think these things are particularly informative but i am planning on filming a lot more halloween looks i hope you can look forward to it and i will see you in the next one bye guys